happening folks Gerald here aka jfro 90 and I'm about to be reacting to Whitney Houston's live performance of I have nothing at the 1993 Billboard Music Awards so this is really cool because I know what's funny is I know this night before the significance like she swept she swept for She's, I don't know how many awards she won that night, but it was a lot. I don't know when she was doing the thank you speech and the podium was full of them. So I love the Whitney documentaries. I love um, Can I Be Me and I love the Whitney documentary that the estate put out. And I know this performance was at the end of the 2018 documentary. But the problem is... I don't think I've ever seen it in full. I feel like even in the, I could be wrong. I've only seen that documentary a handful of times, even though I prefer it's to me the best documentary about Whitney Houston that's out. But um, I don't think that they played this full performance. So weirdly and oddly, I don't know why, but I've never seen this pro this full performance. And what's, it's so funny in the case of Whitney Mariah, and um, I feel like there's one or two more in that group where I've seen a lot of their performances and have favorite performances of like every one of their eras, but fairly, especially in the day and age of YouTube now where you're getting so many more rare finds and you know things that aren't as publicly known, there's things like this which is very publicly known where um, I missed and I don't even know why. I don't know how I did not see this performance many times. But for but um, on the other hand, the performance where she does where she does Lover Man, and then all the men I I need, which was also I believe at the Billboard Awards, um, that's one of my favorite performances she's ever done. And I feel like this one is much more known than that one. So I don't I don't know how. I've come across what I've come across what, but then I, then to be fair, no, that doesn't even count. But I will say this: "I Have Nothing" is one of my all-time favorite Whitney Houston songs. It is definitely. See, I plan on doing a ranking one of the one of these days. I'm going to have a series on this channel called Rank, where I'm going to be doing people's albums, people's songs, people's videos, people's performances, and. See, what's so funny, I want to say I Have Nothing will be in my top 10 favorite Whitney uh, songs, but I don't really, I think I can safely say that, but Whitney, especially her first three albums, and then the Bodyguard soundtrack, and then, but, well, no, it's, it's those first four, especially, I can almost spoil the list and say that if it's going to be a top 10 all top 10 will be from those eras really but even that said i think i have nothing will be up there so without further ado let's get to it let's check out this performance that i have somehow missed <laughs>
<laughs> mm. She looks phenomenal. And she sounds incredible. She sounds as good, if not slightly better, than the album version. Um, it's like I said when I was reacting to Where Do Broken Hearts Go? And it's the fun of reacting to Whitney is that she really made these live performances better. As you can see, she really takes her time with it. It's never been her goal to sound exactly like she does on the album. She has, It's for her breathing. I, I mentioned in the Where Do Break, Broken Hearts Go reaction that she's mentioned that on occasion that um, the way the studios would edit her voice uh, for the albums and for the Zones versions, she was said she has said that um, it doesn't leave a lot of room for her breathing and for and, but not even her breathing but also for the inflexes and the flexibility that she likes to showcase because again she's come from the church and she's very big with that improv with you know hooking it up and so that's what that is my favorite thing about a Whitney performance even not even the how drawn out it is but the the improvisions the um, the little things, the little the, the ad libs, those are what stick to me when it comes to Whitney live. A lot of times more than the belts necessarily, but and the belts do stick too. You can believe that.
how could you not if you're in the room with that how could you how could you not be on your feet with that you know oh my god um i'm gonna say something and i mean this with all disrespect um if she is not within i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you grace of three spaces if she is not within your top three of favorite singers I don't have respect for your list of favorite singers, and that's also I'm, uh, I give you grace and she got to be in your top three, but you will lose that grace depending on who you rank above her. Um, <laughs> you know, oh my God, she's phenomenal. Oh, it's crazy. See, see, I have her in an almost exact three-way triangle of favorite voices ever and best voices ever and I will reveal the other two it should not be hard to guess I have I have reacted to all three of them actually uh, and they're they're vocalists and yeah the, oh my god that was so good and how did I miss that I don't what that's so weird how the hell did I miss that that's nuts anyway <laughs> that is Whitney Houston in 1993 and that was her night she won all those awards that night she won a ton of awards that night and um, that was her night and this was her era this was a this was a fantastic time in music just think about this in 1993 you had re, you had releases from all from some from basically every favorite female artist of mine, you know, in no particular order, Tony Braxton, uh, Tony Braxton's debut album, uh, Mariah Carey's third album, uh, Janet's Janet album, which is one of my most favorite albums of hers. Um, you had uh, Diana Ross release an live album, and then you had Aretha Franklin release a compilation with new songs that I love, like A Deeper Love. Um, yeah, that, 93, and then Whitney, Whitney was, see, the Bodyguard soundtrack, and I think the movie too came out in late 92, so 93 was the year the Bodyguard was reaping a lot of what it was so, like, it was, it was getting the benefits in 93 and 94, so, huh, man, that was, that was a great time, and I hate, I was so, I was too little at that time to really appreciate it, of all the women I named, what's funny is, I knew I knew Tony and Whitney. I knew Tony and Whitney in '93, and, and Aretha too. Oddly, Mariah and Janet, I had ideas of, but their eras weren't as prominent to me, and their their styles and things weren't as prominent to me as Tony, Aretha, and Whitney in 1993. So, coming soon. It is a story that I've told many times in the last ten years. And it actually, in, t in announcing this now, it kind of thumps my heart and hum and humbles me to the point where I almost can't believe it's been 10 years, and I almost can't believe that it happened. I'm going to give you guys a account of the moment my life, of one of the key moments my life changed forever. And that is when I worked for three days on the movie Sparkle in November 2011. And on that last day, I met Whitney Houston. And we had a conversation. And that conversation has inspired me through some of the hardest times I've dealt with in my life and some of the hardest obstacles I've dealt with in my life and kind of going through something right now I, I'm recovering from pneumonia but in general life and career is very different in post 2020 you know in ways we I don't think we ever even slightly predicted it would be in 2011 just the state of the world in general but what Whitney said to me in person had a real impact. And nobody in the world would have guessed what would happen 
just a few months later. If you know me, you know the story well. If you've seen my comments on certain videos and certain things, then you might know it too. But um, I'm going to get vocal. I'm going to get on camera and share this with you with the world. So Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you would like to make donations to my channel, um, the links below are ways you can do that. Um, the links below are ways you can do that. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. But, um, again, my name is Gerald, JFro90, and you guys, please take care of yourselves and each other. I can't Everything that I wanted